Hi guys, welcome back to Outside the Fly Box. Um, here in New Jersey where I live, we are coming into baby duck season. So that being said, I want to tie this, which is my baby duck fly pattern. Um, this actual is the duck that I'm going to tie in the video, and later on in the video I tell you it's a number two hook on the front. It's actually a two O hook. Um, but that's it. Uh, Please bear with me and uh, let's get to spinning. All right, so let's get started. In the vise, I have a one ot standard J hook. Um, it's like a standard worm hook, nothing fancy. Take a look at it there. Um, I put it in the vise um, on an angle because I want this eye vertical, not horizontal, because later on I'll be cutting this hook off. Um, and as always, I have my 3.0 uni thread. I think I gotta use it for almost everything. Uh, I'm using chartreuse now because I ran out of yellow. Um, all right, let's get started. <clears throat> Tie your, um, you know, spin your tying thread on. Get her all wound back. And then wind it up, get a good nice base going, clearly. And then back to the back again. And next up will be... Just your standard run-of-the-mill run yellow uh, deer skin, deer fur. This stuff I actually will stack. I don't always stack hair when I spin, but uh, this stuff I do because I want the tips to line up. Um, <clears throat> clean out the underfur. Pull the tips off. Grab your stacker. Um, would help add both pieces of it. Um, can't be far, can it? Maybe it can. Okay, take five and I'll find the other half of my stacker. Alright, we're back. I uh, couldn't find it, so I got my other stacker. Alright, so just want to. Put your tips in. This is not as big as my other one. At any rate. That's stacked. Um, and I want to have this extend just a little bit past the bend. And I'm actually going to cut this. So I'm not spitting hair tradi traditionally. I can't even talk today. Um, so get it on there. You know, two loose wraps. Pull her down nice and tight. Get it to spin. Almost like you would, just like you, just like you're spinning. Except for we're not really spinning. Um, and then Lefty Cray always said, if you want a stronger bug when you're making stuff out of the bucktail. Take a little bit of glue and then just tickle those fibers. There's videos where he said that, so it's not like I'm just making it up. And then smash them down nice and tight. There you go. Not perfect, but um, it'll work for my purposes. Next will be the legs. These are actually made out of um, bucktail, orange bucktail wrapped in orange thread and they're kind of in the same manner you would if you were doing an extended body for a small dry fly. Um, so let's get those tied in. Because baby ducks have to have legs, right? <clears throat> There's one. I'm going to come up in on the other side with the other. You want to try to get them close as you can, obviously. Hold that there. Not like how we want it. Let's give her a little turn. Back it up. That 
That's a little more gooder, I think. Yeah, I can live with that. And then, just tie that down. Cut off the excess leg material without cutting your thread. Now that ball's down. You want to advance a little farther. You want to start with your next section of yellow deer hair. Like I said, you're basically just spinning this just like you would if you were making a bug, a deer hair bug. The only difference is, like I said before, is you're tying in closer to the butt end tips and leaving the length of the deer hair. So I'm trying to, not really spin it, I'm trying to get the length and profile that I'm looking for. Yeah, that is a bit of a pain in the butt. Tips are straight. Um, just figure about how long you need it. I tried to get the first couple to be almost the same length on the end, if you can see that. And then uh, cut it. And two loose wraps. And then spin it around. Of course, that was not cooperating the way it should. Could be because of the glue. Alright, we'll do another one. I can fight with it. It's not what I do. You're not even coming off. There you go. Here's that play again. Clean the deer hair. Stack it. The rest of this you can kind of actually spin it like you normally would. Alright, same thing. Just about the same length. Maybe a hair shorter. Cut the length. One, two. There we go. If you have to, you can even help it around some. Out a little. Make sure it looks like it's all getting around where it needs it. Yep. And had it. A little bit of glue on the feathers again, or the hair, should I say? Helps hold it together and wind them down. I think next time I'm going to uh, use bigger clumps. I think it'll work better. Cause you kind of want that just to dress and stretch back. Give you a duck body profile. I think from here, uh, it's the same met same methods all the way up to the tip of this hook. And so I guess I'll fast forward it. All right. See you on the other side. Okay, for this last one, I'm actually going to leave the plume on to help give a little bit more of a shoulder profile coming off the next hook. And I have to help it around. Not 
perfect, but the fish will eat it. And advance this forward, just like you would if you're spinning regular hair. And if you want, you can even give it a little push backwards, just get a little bit more room to tie your whip knot. And then cut your thread. Glue it up. Glue it up pretty good. Not really about worry about worried about crowding this eye because we're gonna have uh, some thirty pound mono go through it. That would be the circus upstairs that you're hearing, my nine-year-old. All right, that's phase one is done. All right, for the second part, I have a, um, what is it? It's a number two uh, Owen Mosquito, or owner, or however you say it, Mosquito hook. Um, and what I'm going to do, same thing, start your thread in. Um, not by the hook eye like you normally would. Wrap it back. Be careful of that tip, I just sharpened that, so she's pretty gnarly. Get her in there good. And then... Get that out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. Cut your tag end. Um, and then take your piece of 30 pound mono. What I like to do is take a pair of pliers and mash the end of it. It kind of flattens it out some, which isn't really the important side. It's actually helps it from pulling. And what I will do is run this piece down the front side of the hook. Nice and tight. Back up. And then take your body, which I already clipped the hook out of this. Which is the reason why I wanted this hook, this, um, hook eye vertical is so I could run the mono straight down each side and keep the body straight from twisting. And then the same thing what I'll do is I'll take my pliers and just chew up a little bit of that mono to make it tie in tighter. It keeps, I don't know, it makes it more slip resistant. And then, if I can get it to unwind off my thread, Now, a lot of guys won't cut stuff like this if they're good scissors, but the thing is with me is if you use the all the way back in deeper, you don't usually use when you're cutting fine stuff, it won't hurt them. You'll never know. And then wrap it back up, and I'll throw a half inch there. So I'm going to throw some super glue on these wraps will actually help the uh, help everything stay together. she is all right and then from here it's one more clump of deer hair I think I end up doing like six total I don't remember I have to go back and count them clean it Stack it. Same thing, I'm going to get it as long as I can coming off of here. About right there, I guess. Come on your thread back. This stuff doesn't always spin around this very good, so you really might want to have to help it. There's times where I have to do this in two clumps, bottom and a top. 
like maybe now. We'll see. Here's that play again. I'm not going to fight with it. I think what happens sometimes is the super glue doesn't, you know, allow the thread to spin. But I'd rather, I think, uh, deal with that more than the fly coming apart from a couple fish eating it. I like glue. I like them strong. Strong flies are good flies. Alright, so let's spin it over. Trim it. Slide her in. Try to fan it out and go down both sides of the hook. And instead of obviously spinning it, you're just going to try to hold everything there together and stack it. Should do it. I just throw my stacker around. It's not perfect, but I will make that up with the other side. All right, lost my stacker again, apparently. Oh man, there it is. Now this will be the last section of deer hair. Clean it. Yeah, I'm doing it backwards. For me that's backwards, should I say. Tips always go in the smaller side easier. For me, that is. Try to match the length of the ones you put on the bottom, even maybe hair go hair longer. Yeah, like that. Almost like I know what I was doing. And then throw your glue in there. You're losing tools everywhere. A little bit of glue. Hold her together. Keep that drip. Alright, from there I'm going to put wings on it, which would be these guys. It's just your marabou. I don't know if it's a plume. I think, I think that's what they call these. I'm not 100% sure. Just yellow marabou. Because, they make it look like they can fly, right? Eventually one day. Don't need to go crazy. Two wraps, three wraps. Cut it off. And then the far side. Try to, you know, I always try to stay a little high on the, on the hook. Give it, keeps the marigold on a little bit more on the top. I don't know. I don't even know if the fish care. I just know if it makes me feel better about it. Baby ducks. And not bad. Couple three wraps. Total anyway, I guess. I don't know. I just pulled that thin eye. Um, I can still live with it. I don't think the fish are gonna matter. Come down, squeeze that glue out. Half hitch. I'll throw some more glue on. Eh, it doesn't look too bad. 
almost down to the wire with this one. Just about finished. Which would be from there is just a yellow chenille to make up the neck. I can do this, I really can. Man, I missed it twice. It's quite not, man. There you go. Way down, half inch to hold the hook on. <clears throat> and then again, you're like probably tired of hearing this, more glue. I'll hold her together. And let's just wrap your chenille up. Try to do it without pulling it out. Try to act like I've done this before. Now back up. Clue looks still looks wet, so I think I'm okay with that. Half hitch one more time. Now we can wrap it up. Turns out. Tie the schneel off. <clears throat> a quick little more half hitch and then this is just regular old orange two mil foam that I will use for a head and beak Now, the debate that I always have with these things, I always wonder about, how, you know, should I put eyes on it? Because if I was this guy, I really wouldn't want to see what was going to eat me. But, man, banging the camera around. Let's see how bad this is. Let's see if I'm going to post it or do another one. I don't like to do practice flies. Let's jump right in. There's that. There's that. There's that. And uh, why not? Let's put a couple small eyes on it. Quack, quack. Alright. That's my uh, baby duck. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing along. And always remember to think outside the fly box. And uh, please subscribe, like the video, tell your friends, your neighbors, you know. All right, guys, have a good day.